So my topic is surgical skills exiting the residency with pride. So uh, we must remember that we have to go through a, a step by step and there are a lot of times that you'll fall out but the important thing is to keep on going on. So the training actually has two parts of it. The first is the wet lab training and the second is the gray matter enhancement. The wet lab training consists of developing a good hand-eye coordination particularly with the microscope and suturing is one thing which helps you with it because it teaches dexterity under the microscope and I recommend at least 50 good sutures before moving on to the globe. These are the sutures that I had placed. I still have those collected uh, somewhere uh, when I was a resident. So for initial cases for gross suturing you can even use the banana or even the, a cut chicken and you can start suturing with it. That's how I learned it in my MBBS days. Uh, instruments, it's important that you purchase your own instruments. This was my set. You can see over here that there is a, a there is an artificial anterior chamber. There is a, a reverse Sinsky hook there. There is a Meloni keratoscope. There is a Rajiv Roth keratoscope. There are some lamellar dissectors in this and a couple of instruments for cataract and other procedures. This is I always kept myself because I could go and practice with these in the wet lab and it really makes a big difference when you have your own instruments. Instruments, you don't need to depend on anybody else for it. Uh, a goat size is a good way to start off it. Uh, it helps you suturing, SICS, FACO, TRAB, valve surgeries, squint surgeries, the keratoplasty, trauma repair, everything is there that you can do and you can experiment when you are in the wet lab. So why do we need a wet lab? Because it helps you practice at your own pace and abilities without the danger of stress and it's repeatable so you you allowed corrections it develops skills and trusts it develops coordination it develops uh, uh, helps you arrive better prepared when you to your first patient and other patients as well so remember one thing that practice always makes perfect so this was the wet lab at Arvind the Pondicherry that I learned a lot and uh, the sisters and my teachers over there were extremely helpful with it. So there were different wet lab models that they had. This was the spring action forces which I'll be talking about. This is my colleague Dr. Sh uh, Srinath who was there and this is a discarded cornea that we were using. We cut it open and this is Dr. Prashant over here who was teaching us how to do FECO in a, a goat side. Uh, this is a, a beautiful article by Dr. Seema Ramakrishnan ma'am and her group and this is the spring action forceps that they had developed and it helps to keep the globe extremely stable and it is present in the uh, British Journal of Ophthalmology. Another wonderful article by Dr. Sen Gupta and team from the Arvind Pondicherry and uh, this is what they did to learn phaco emulsification is first uh, rexis after an incision the rexis was done by uh, uh, a senior and the it was debulked and th then the central area you could put a human nucleus which you retrieve from the SICS cases and suture up that case and go from the opposite side and then you can actually practice phaco emulsification. I've taught duty specifically regarding this technique to a lot of residents myself. Uh, these are the ones that are available with Madhu instruments. I have no financial interest but this is also a way in which I personally started doing phaco a lot in the wet lab. You can also practice your lexes on any plastic, an orange peel, uh, an eggshell. Dr. Anju has developed a video also as well uh, where using a kitchen or whatever is available in the kitchen and you can use that to practice all steps of your surgery. Nowadays the simulators are also available. I saw this is the Help Me See simulator that is present in a lot of hospitals and uh, uh, there's one, a lot of ones with uh, 3D, VR, everything is being developed nowadays and it's going to take practice to the next level as well. Uh, it's always important to practice using the non-dominant hand and uh, because you need to do a lot of steps. If, you, if both hands are working, the surgery becomes easy. I do play a lot of video games uh, 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 and FIFA was one nice to play and also helps in developing that hand-eye coordination. Uh, so whatever guitar playing, whatever you do, it, it, it helps you uh, get better. An important thing is to understand your machine. I have no financial interest. You should know your settings. You should know how to clean the instrument. It's not the sister's job. It's not your assistant's job. You can only teach them. You can only tell them what to do when you know what you're doing. So if you respect your machine, your machine will respect you. This is a very important point. Next part is the gray matter enhancement. It's extremely important to read books and journals, particularly to keep updated with the latest articles and the latest things that's going on. There are lots of online resources available and uh, uh, the, this is a couple of them would be a lot of YouTube channels are there. You can go, everything is available. A lot of webinars are there. You, YouTube has a source where you can nowadays, our previous generation did not have that luxury, but we do now. Remember that every step is important. So uh, you command respect from your juniors and colleagues if you know even the simplest of tasks. 
uh, assisting is extremely important a good surgeon is always a good assistant uh, it's very important to observe this is when i was a fellow my residents were observing me and this is when i was in cfs i was observing i was in three for a couple uh, for 30 minutes or so i went to the other ot dr lalit was operating and i went and saw even though i'm not a retina surgeon so there's always something new to learn when you're observing i have had a lot of mentors and I'm extremely blessed with this and they have taught me and you're going to get more and more mentors in your journey. Do remember them because and then you have to carry that forward and become mentors for somebody else as well. It's extremely important to to teach your juniors as well because when you teach them you also learn a little bit more about it and uh, teaching is much more difficult than uh, 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 thought uh, it's important to record your surgical videos because when you read the, uh, rec- you can go back and take a look at that what mistakes you have had and it's also a good thing you can present that at the conferences and in various po- presentations it's important to discuss with your seniors colleagues and juniors and uh, you know you can come through a lot of solutions if you discuss with them so it, it, another important thing is be always available and never say no the reason i did a lot of surgeries during my fellowship particularly was i was always available whether it's 2 in the night or 3 in the night trauma case okay i'm there to do it no matter what i'm there so that's why i got to do a lot of surgeries and that helped me enhance my skill set a lot uh attend conferences update yourself see live surgeries in live surgery you you get to see a lot of the nuances that are there and you know uh, the edited things take out a lot of uh, from that have a targeted approach and it should be a weekly target and a monthly target and when you reach that target go on to the next step uh because you need to keep on revising these targets and then only you will be uh, better prepared always challenge yourself not somebody else but challenge yourself and be a better version of yourself respect your patients this is very very important you should you should have that compassion towards them they have come to you for treating them and you should show that compassion towards them there's a long way to go but uh, uh, thank you so much thank you dr karan uh,